guys, hey, let, let's finish World War II uh, by uh, the Japanese part where we win, and then the war will be over. But uh, it's, it's a little complicated. After four years of fighting, we finally take over enough of those islands. Remember island hopping? We take enough of those islands uh, over and get airplanes there that we're able to pretty much continuously bomb Japanese cities. And uh, what we end up doing uh, at the very end of this is using nuclear weapons. You can see this uh, on the right, this thing called the Mushroom Cloud, which was taken from the first plane uh, that bombed a Japanese city called Hiroshima. So we're bombing Japanese cities. We're firebombing them. A lot of their cities and, and, and houses are made out of wood, so it's catastrophic. Uh, here's a picture where you can see a bunch of our guys labeling bombs and, and writing stuff on them. And these are from those, those tropical islands in the Pacific. So we rained bombs down on them. They did not surrender. And here's a city after a firebombing. I mean, it looks like I thought at first it was a nuclear bomb. It's a firebombing where the only buildings that are left are made of uh, you know concrete. And there weren't as many, obviously, as, as wood. It looked like they weren't going to surrender with just bombing alone. And we had planned an assault on the islands of Japan. Now, if we had thought, you know, going into those little islands in the Pacific Ocean was going to be rough to uh, assault the homeland, their whole country was mobilized for, you know, defense and suicide bombing and all sorts of stuff. It, they Estimates are it could have killed up to a million Americans. So uh, this is a part of a map that shows the, the planned assaults and where they were going to go. Thankfully, we didn't have to do that. And um, in the summer of 1945, four years after we started fighting the Japanese, uh, in the deserts of New Mexico, we tested our first atomic weapon. And it was known as uh, <clears throat> Trinity. And if you uh, do a little bit of research, I'll be posting a lot of links on, on that that you can watch. Uh, this was developed to be you know, blown up on a tower. And when they blew it up, I mean, it was hotter than the sun, and it turned the sand to glass. And, and we'll talk a lot more about nuclear weapons when we talk about the Cold War. But the bomb was demonstrated. It was uh, taken to a very small island, one of those islands we captured. And in a secret mission, uh, actually two bombs were delivered. The yellow one was called the Fat Man, and uh, the blue one was called the Little Boy. A little different in design, but they were designed to uh, be dropped from an airplane. One of the things that I like my students to know is that the bombs never hit the ground. They were, they were designed to explode in the air. Uh, the idea is if it hits the ground, you're not going to get as much damage. If you go over your target and have it explode, it goes out. So there'll be a, a video I'm going to go to right now from the Smithsonian Channel that, that kind of details what happened both in the airplane and on the ground. And then we'll talk about, uh, you know, the effects of that. Okay. It took about 45 seconds from the time the bomb left the airplane until it exploded. And I think there wasn't a man in the airplane that wasn't either timing it with his watch or counting or doing something. I was sure the bomb was a dud. I was sure it wasn't going to work. After falling for 43 seconds, the time and barometric triggers started the firing mechanism. A uranium bullet fired down a barrel into a uranium target. Together, they started a nuclear chain reaction. Solid matter began to come apart, releasing untold quantities of energy.
Okay, so the nuclear weapons used against Japan were, were brutal. They had never been tested on human beings. The, the city who got it first was called Hiroshima. Sometimes people call it Hiroshima. But anyway, um, nothing was left within a few mile radius of it except some concrete structures. Uh, it, was, it was horrible. It was a big firebomb and then radiation and all sorts of stuff that we learned. Um, these pictures right here are called Atomic Shadows. People were um, exposed to the blast and it left the, the shadow of the person burned into the sides of sidewalks and buildings and stuff like that. You can see the outline of a bicycle there and posts on a bridge. It just got so bright that it changed the color of uh, things that were uh, around and if there was something blocking it, it made sort of a, a shadow and, and that. It melted glass. Um, there's a watch there that somehow survived. This one right here is uh, change that was melted together in people's pockets. And that's how, that's how bad it was. The people vaporized and the change, the metal in their pockets actually melted together. So this was a pretty awful weapon and, and hundreds of thousands of people ended up dying uh, either by the fire itself or by radiation. And there's some pretty gruesome pictures. Uh, it was something that, uh, you know, we, we did. And when we dropped the first bomb, believe it or not, the Japanese didn't surrender. We dropped a second bomb on the city of Nagasaki. And uh, after that one, which uh, was also as devastating, uh, the Japanese finally agreed to surrender and, and World War II was over. But it was ended with nuclear weapons. Some people will look back today and say we should have never done that. Uh, the new president name was Harry Truman. Harry Truman had to make a decision. You know, do we risk a million people possibly dying invading? Uh, do we demonstrate the bomb and show them? Well, an interesting fact, I wouldn't call it a fun fact, but we only had two bombs. It would have been months before we had more. So the idea of keeping it secret and thinking that, that we could just keep dropping these bombs on Japan, I think was enough to, uh, to get them to realize that it was over. So those bombs were dropped in August of 1945. Um, the official surrender uh, took place uh, on September 2nd, and we took our uh, big ships and airplanes and military into their capital of Tokyo. And on a battleship, you can see all these guys right here all dressed in their whites. The whites are for formal things going on, was a surrender ceremony. And here are some pictures of the surrender ceremony. I'll follow it with a video, but the Japanese officials came on board and surrendered documents to uh, the United States. You know, they signed documents to the United States, signed them, and, and other countries that were involved on our side uh, proclaiming an end to the war and total, total U.S. control of the Japanese islands as well as all their territories were given back to uh, the people who had had them. So uh, we end up controlling Japan for about 10 years. And what we do is we set up a democracy for them. We set up sort of a model of what we had. Here's a really cool fact right here, and take a look at this slide. It's uh, the first flag raised over Tokyo, an American flag on Japanese soil. It was uh, raised by a guy named Bud Stapleton from Syracuse. So that's pretty cool stuff. All right, anyway, uh, the territories are taken away, and uh, we'll talk on Monday about the trials, but uh, Tojo was captured, and the only thing that the Japanese got out of this and and I think we did it because I thought we'd get cooperation we get cooperation was we did let them keep their emperor so the emperor gets on the radio and uh, surrenders and there's a pretty famous picture of him taken with our our general in charge of Japan uh, now MacArthur that was purposely taken to show that you know the emperor was smaller and not a godlike figure like he was uh, you know proclaimed to be to the people of Japan so Three days later, on the 2nd of September, 1945, preparations are underway for the official surrender. The responsibility for signing falls to Japan's foreign minister, Mamoru Shigemitsu. Japan's leaders have tried to avoid taking responsibility for the surrender. So it is my duty to carry through this last decisive act. I was surrounded by enemy onlookers. Then General MacArthur entered. It is my earnest hope, and indeed the hope of all mankind, that from this solemn occasion, a better world 
shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past. MacArthur declared the war was over and requested us to sign the surrender. It comes hard to us Japanese to use the word surrender. The military thinks it should be referred to as a ceasefire. But whatever you call it, Japan's rebirth will depend on her realization that she has surrendered as a result of defeat. So um, I'm going to leave a lot of links about nuclear weapons, how they work, uh, some of the stuff there. Um, if you do some exploring on that, it's pretty gruesome, the pictures from you know the atomic explosions and stuff. But when we talk about the Cold War and building even bigger bombs, we'll, we'll get into nuclear weapons a little bit more. But uh, we beat Germany first, followed by Japan, and uh, it's, it's World War II. It's, it's something that I haven't even really scratched the surface of the smaller stories. So, you know, as a young person, I was always very interested in this and did a lot of my reading. And I've talked to some of the students as well on, on the team that have read books about um, individual stories and, and things uh, that are, uh, you know, a small piece of the bigger picture. And that's what I hope you're interested in. I, I think that there's a lot of really interesting things that... Uh, you know, you'd find worthwhile. You study the stuff your whole life. It was a huge event. We'll we'll, we'll kind of wrap it up on Monday with, uh, you know, what happened to the leaders and the countries themselves. Okay, uh, have a good weekend. I miss you guys a lot, and uh, I'm just gonna keep doing this stuff for you. All right, bye.